I have code P2767, which indicates problems with the input speed sensor having no signal, and specifically, the conductor plate needs to be replaced. So, I'll show a detailed step-by-step -step process on how to remove, fix, and install this. This is actually a very common problem for Mercedes and Chrysler Dodge and Jeep vehicles, especially ones with the NAG1 722.6 transmissions. Some other codes this may apply to are codes P2765, P2766, P2767, and P2768, which all involve problems with the speed sensor, which again is integrated in the conductor plate, inconveniently located on the valve body in the transmission housing, which also means the transmission oil also has to be drained. Draining or flushing the transmission oil on high mileage vehicles may be risky as some say the clutch material and seals essentially get weaker and can hurt the transmission. Some like using a thick transmission additive to reduce a transmission that slips, hesitates, or has rough shifting. So you'll have to decide for yourself if replacing the conductor plate is worth doing or not. To help others out, please mention your thoughts on this in the comments below. This car has around 80,000 miles on it. With that being said, these are all the tools, supplies, and parts you'll need to gather. I counted around 30 items. This may seem like a lot, so for easy reference, I will put a checklist in the description below. Lastly, if this video helps, click like and subscribe as always appreciated. Enough talking, let's start. Jack the car up or put it on ramps and go underneath the car with your equipment. You'll see a rectangle piece, which is the transmission oil pan. First, I'll unhook this wire harness clip so the trans pan doesn't hit it once removed. Now, it doesn't matter if you remove the pan first or the plug adapter. I'll start with the transmission plug connector. In fact, if you have any transmission oil leaking in this corner area, it's usually because of this plug having a bad o-ring seal. So this job requires a new conductor plate, but it's best to also get a new transmission filter, gasket, the transmission oil, and this plug connector adapter. Like I said before, all parts are in the description. Anyway, I'll try to pull this by hand downward or counterclockwise. I have a separate helpful detailed video you can watch later that shows other helpful tricks if struggling to remove this transmission plug adapter. Okay. That other video will be in the description below. Get your oil pan ready. That sucker out. This is the electrical connector wire sensor. Just pull out and place to the side. Remember the position of this? When it goes back in? Next, grab a seven millimeter deep socket and an extension with a small ratchet wrench. You'll feel when the socket is grabbing onto the nut inside. Anyway, go ahead and loosen this. By the way, the nut does not come out. Next, I'll try to pull it out. And I am struggling, so the connector plug is still not coming out, so just lightly pry or wedge it out with a small flathead screwdriver. Get your oil pan ready, because it's just going to come out. Make sure you wear your gloves. Okay, there we go. So, I'll let some of the oil drain out, and then clean this up a bit, and next, remove the transmission oil pan. By the way, make sure you grab the O-ring as it usually falls off the plug adapter when removing it. This has two O-rings, so make sure you get the second one out. Next, I'm just going to crack the bolts loose with the T30 and an extension. There are a total of six screw clamps. Notice, I'm just loosening them in a zigzag way. To speed this up, Grab a power tool and put a plastic bag on it to protect oil from getting on the tool. And remove these screws with the Torx T30 bit. Let me know in the comments if you like my crafty idea using a plastic bag. Some oil will come out, so make sure you have your oil pan below to catch some. Wait for it to drain a bit, then remove all the remaining screws. Hold it well and tip it over to remove even more of the oil. Then place it to the side. 
If some of your transmission pan clamps are seized or become broken as you remove this, I have a separate video that shows how to fix this. That video is also in the description below. Now that the pan is off, just pull off this old transmission filter. Some more oil will come out. Let it drain. I'll pour some of the oil in a recyclable container. And then let's look at the transmission pan next. Okay, so remove the rubber gasket and use some shop towels and some brake cleaner to clean the transmission pan. Before I fully do that, let me show you the shiny gray clutch remains in the pan. Look at how dirty that is. Wow, that's a magnet. Look at that. Damn. That gray shiny sludge is the clutch material. This transmission oil has never been changed. Damn, look at that. So here's how the magnet looks now that it's cleaned. Wow, that's a lot. Back under the car, there's 11 Torx T30 screw bolts. This gray shiny rectangle block is the valve body and is now going to be removed. Like with removing the transmission oil pan, I'm going to lightly crack loose all 11 of these valve body screws with a ratchet and Torx T30 bit. I would strongly recommend using a bottle or floor jack to hold this because it's heavy. Be safe. Let that leak, this power drill. Let's go ahead and remove it a little quicker. Last screw. It's heavy. It's very heavy. Now to carefully lower it. This valve body weighs 15 pounds. So again, make sure you use something to hold this as you remove all the screws. I just flipped over the valve body and you can see the conductor plate and the new one to the left. Before I talk about the conductor plate, see this gliding? It's called a selector rod valve, which is what allows your car to shift into different gears. I go into a lot of important detail about this in a separate video for those that break this gear selector valve as a result of improperly installing this in the valve body. So please take your time with this and install it correctly. That interesting video is also in the description. So I'll talk more about this later during the installation because it's quite important and you'll see why later. Moving upward on this conductor plate, this is the root of the problem, the speed sensor right here, which is what is causing the fault code. This says Mercedes-Benz, even though this is a Chrysler Dodge Jeep car. They did lots of collaboration with Mercedes on parts. This is where the plug adapter goes into between. You can see all the connector pins and is why it had to be removed first before this valve body could be removed from the car. And here you have a total of six solenoids held in by three brackets. So now let's remove them. Grab a ratchet with a Torx T30 bit, crack them loose, Or to be faster, use a power tool. Be very organized and leave each solenoid to the side as you pop each one up and out. Don't mix them up. Okay, pick this up. One corner. I just removed the selector rod. Right here. I'll explain removing this again in a different angle. Take a look at it. There's a clip on this side that you'll pop up. You'll pop up from this corner and from this corner. And then it should just come up. Just wiggle it up slowly. There we go. Now swap this with this. That's how the valve body looks. If this has helped so far, please hit that like button and subscribe. There's a lot of helpful videos on this channel, so check them out later. Anyway, now for the installation. I'll go over torque recommendations and more tips and best practices, okay. as well as show why that black and yellow valve selector rod is so important, making this a smooth job to do. Remember, all tools, supplies, and part numbers are in the description for easy reference. Okay, 
With that being said, time to reinstall this right now. So, pop the conductor plate in, reinstall each one of the six solenoids, then insert the screw and bracket clamp to hold the solenoids in place. So, this does not use a lot of torque, but you can torque these screws with a T30 bit to 8 newton meters or 71 inch pounds or 5.9 foot pounds. I previously took out this bracket, but I'm actually going to put it back in. So, that goes right there, like so. And that's the only one with the small screw. So, the other screws, you can't mix up. So, I'm going to put this little screw back in. And that will be torqued later. But, for now, let's put it back in. Maneuver the 15-pound valve body up. You'll feel it line up into place. And put one or two screws in real quick while holding the valve body. Make sure the transmission selector rod is also lined up. If not, you'll break the yellow and black rod and have to take this down again. As previously mentioned, I have a separate video that shows how to replace a broken selector rod, but just install it correctly the first time. Slide the selector valve into the groove and push it and slide it back. It will be just below the rod above and will fit in this U-shaped piece once you further tighten the screws on this valve body. So, you'll see that it's nice and flat and no space. Now you can fully push up the valve body and put some more screws in. Push it up, get one of the screws going. And use a power tool to screw these T30 screws in faster. Next, grab a torque wrench and tighten the screws to 5.9 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. If you didn't before, you can also reattach this leaf spring or detent plate right now. This is the only piece with that really small screw. See, there's the piece. Look at how tight that is. No gap, no space. Beautiful. Next, I'll reinstall this new transmission adapter plug. But first, lube both the O-rings with some transmission oil. Then, push it in. If having difficulty getting this in, I have tapped this in before with a mallet. You can see the full details on that. Uh, I guess I'll also post that video in the description. But it's usually pretty easy. Just give it a good push. Put your extension in with your 7mm deep socket. And go ahead and tighten it with your ratchet wrench on. Or you could be precise and use a torque wrench and torque it to 22 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Okay. I just heard a click. That means this is good. Take that out. Then put in the plug connector and push the lever up. As you do that, the connector gets sucked in and a tight seal is now complete. Next, grab the filter. This plastic tab goes right here. There's a hole for it. So, next, pop in your new transmission oil filter. There we go. That's it. After cleaning the pan and magnet, put on a new gasket. And grab your clamp with the screw in it. Put it in so it helps hold the weight of the transmission pan, which feels super light compared to the 15-pound valve body. Anyway, start putting in the rest of the pan clamps and screws. Now, optionally, if your screws are in bad shape, you can put new ones on, or if they keep spinning when torquing, and not getting tight, then you can put some blue thread locker on each screw for extra strength. Now I'm gonna torque all these bolts to 5.9 pounds, 72 inch pounds, or eight newton meters. We are almost done here. So next, open the hood and remove the twist cap towards the rear engine. Grab the recommended automatic transmission oil, or ATF plus four, in this case, for this vehicle, and a funnel. Pour the same amount that was previously drained or the recommended amount for your vehicle. Actually, to be precise, you can buy a special measuring dipstick tool and use a code reader to get the most accurate transmission oil level. I'll make a separate video on that for those interested. Now to go inside and test the car. Turn it on. Shift gears real quick. Keep shifting the gears to help circulate that new transmission oil and then I'll go drive the vehicle and see how it feels. 
So not a hard job, assuming you don't run into any problems along the way. If you do, check out the other videos that I previously mentioned that are in the description below to help whether your transmission pan or plug adapter is seized and hard to get off, or something is broken, like the transmission pan clamps or selector valve rod is busted. Okay. Also, all the tools and supplies are in the description for easy reference. So please mention your thoughts or ideas in the comments about this video, and let me know if you enjoyed this video by tapping that like button and subscribing for more insightful videos like these. Until next time, thanks for watching, and always think how you can fix your car or truck yourself, and always remember to try to help others out. Later!